Now, Jamie here with Country Diggers. Today, I thought we'd go into Pirates of the Florida Coast, Truce, Legends, and Myths by Robert Jacob. And today, we will, we will be reading Chapter 14, The 1715 Treasure Fleet. So, it's going to be good. Stay tuned. Chapter 14, The 1715 Treasure Fleet. Since the mid-1500s, all the gold and silver that was mined in Peru, Bolivia, and Ecuador was taken to Panama, and all the treasure from the Spanish possessions in the Pacific was brought to Acapulco by a dozen or so Manila galleons each year. All this treasure was then transported across the Isthmus of Panama by mule caravan to either Portobello or Nombre de Dios, which means name of God. At the same time, Aztec gold, along with cocoa and other valuable products, <clears throat> were taken to Veracruz, while other rich commodities from South America were taken to either Cartagena or Maru Cabo. All this wealth would eventually make its way to Havana, Cuba, where officials would carefully record the exact amounts and box the treasure for shipment to Spain. When all this bureaucracy was complete, the treasure would be loaded onto a single fleet of large ships known as the Treasure Fleet. Once a year, this fabulously wealthy Spanish treasure fleet uh, would sail from Cuba to Spain, timed precisely to miss the hurricane season. However, the War of the Spanish Succession changed all that. <clears throat> threats from the large from large army, oh, threats from large enemy naval attacks forced Spain to stop all shipments until the war was over. But the gold, silver, and other riches continued to accumulate in Cuba on schedule. After years of waiting, the amount of treasure in the Havana warehouses was enormous. In addition to gold and silver, there were large amounts of porcelain, ivory and silk from the Philippines, as well as an impressive assortment of pearls, emer emeralds, and other jewels. By the end of the war, Spain was in desperate needs of funds. So the decision to send the treasure fleet was made, regardless of the risk. The job of command went to General Don Antonio Echevers, Echevers. Normally, the fleet would sail from Havana in March, long before the hurricane season. However, this year was different. Endless delays forced the fleet to wait until the middle of the summer to sail. <clears throat> First, the mule trains that brought the treasure over the Isthmus of Panama were slower than usual causing the initial sailing date to be pushed back to April 11th, 1715. The next delay was caused when a sudden storm hit Veracruz on March 28th, 1715, damaging the ships that were about to sail for Havana. It took five weeks, over five weeks, to make repairs. The Spanish ships assembled were the Nostra, Senor, Nostra Senora de la Regal, which means Our Lady of Regala, the Santo Cristo de San Roman, the Nostra Senora del Carmen, the Nostra Senora de la Papa, the Nostra Senora del Rosio, <clears throat> the uh, Urac de Lama, 
which the original name was Santesium, Santesium, the uh, Santesium Trinidad was the original name of the Eucara de Liama, and it was a cargo ship. Okay, the Nostria Senora de la Neves, um, the Maria Gallant. The El Senora San Miguel, the El Chavaro, and the Nostria Senora de la Concepcion, and additional French ship, the Griffin, was added to the fleet. The Griffin was a seven hundred. Um, excuse me. The Griffin was a seventy-gun warship that had been sent to Veracruz to bring back 48,801 pieces of eight that the Spanish owed the French government for the loan of two warships in the recent war. Once all the ships were assembled at Havana, the treasure had to be recorded and boxed which pushed the departure date back even further. All this greatly annoyed General Don Antonio D. Echevers, <clears throat> but there was nothing he could do. The wealth was enormous. The lead ship alone carried 1,300 chests of coins, plus gold bars, jewels, pearls, and china porcelain. The official estimation of the entire treasure carried on the fleet totaled over 15 million pieces of eight. <clears throat> this, of course, was only the official count. In addition to the officers and crew, the treasure fleet was carrying hundreds of passengers back to Spain many of whom were exceptionally wealthy. There is no way of knowing how much wealth was brought on board as personal property of these passengers. Also, there is no way of telling how many jewels and pearls were being smuggled aboard the treasure fleet by officials not wanting to share a percentage of the value with the crown. <clears throat> With the King of Spain demanding his treasure, a decision was made for the fleet to sail as soon as it was ready, even though it was right in the middle of Florida's hurricane season. By the end of July 1715, the treasure fleet was re finally ready to sail. On July 24, 1715, the treasure fleet left Havana and at 4 a.m. on July 31st, 1715, the 11 Spanish ships were hit by a tremendous hurricane. Confined in the Florida Straits, with no room to maneuver, the ships were dashed about by fierce waves and blown westward to the shallow banks. Only the French ship Griffin escaped because it was so far ahead that the hurricane completely missed the ship. The Griffin arrived safely in France, unaware of the fate of the rest of the fleet. As, <clears throat> as for the 11 Spanish treasure ships, the hurricane drove every one of them into the shallow Florida banks and destroyed them all. It is believed that most of the ships went down along the southeast Florida coast with at least one getting as far north as Amelia Island. Three of these ships sank in shallow waters near San Sebastian Inlet and were salvageable. <clears throat> By the fall of 1715, the Spanish established a camp near San Sebastian Inlet and began salvage operations. Havana provided the most sophisticated salvage equipment available in the early 18th century, such as diving bells, 
since the three salvageable ships sank in relatively shallow water, much of the treasure from those vessels could be recovered, and huge amounts of gold and silver began accumulating at the salvage camp under the guard of only 60 Spanish soldiers. News of the sinking of the Spanish fleet spread rapidly throughout the Caribbean and the entire eastern seaboard. Hundreds of opportunists began planning ways to loot the Spanish shipwrecks. Even English government officials were supporting and encouraging the looting of the Spanish wrecks. Governor Spotswood of Virginia wrote a letter to King George I of Great Britain saying, there is advice of considerable events in these parts that a Spanish plate fleet richly laden consisting of 11 sail uh, are cast away in the Gulf of Florida. I think it is my duty to inform His Majesty of this accident, which may be improved to the advantage of His Majesty's subjects by encouraging them to attempt the recovery of some of the immense wealth. <clears throat> this sparked an international race to the Florida coast by everyone who could sail a ship or row a boat. But for most, they arrived too late. One of the former Nassau privateers by the name of Henry Jennings beat them all to it. Acting quickly, the governor of Jamaica, Archibald Hamilton, gave Jennings secret orders on November 21, 1715, to attack the Spanish savage camp and obtain as much treasure as he could. The reason for the secrecy was that Governor Hamilton was not planning on spending the profits he, re he realized from the looting of the Spanish treasure fleet back to Great Britain. He was not he was not planning on sending them back. Okay. Uh, needless to say, Jennings jumped at the chance. In November 1715, Jennings and his fleet of two ships and three sloops <clears throat> landed 300 men on the beach near the salvage camp and easily drove off the 60 Spanish defenders. They took coins and bars worth about 60,000 pieces of eight. On their way back to Jamaica, Jennings and his fleet took a Spanish merchant ship traveling from Portobello to Havana and got another 60,000 pieces of eight, plus a valuable cargo of indigo which they sold when they returned to Jamaica. A few weeks later, Jennings figured that the Spanish had time to stockpile more treasure and decided to raid the salvage camp again. On January 26, 1716, he returned in only one sloop named the Bathsheba and landed a well-armed party ashore at night. They approached the camp in the darkness with their weapons drawn. The confused Spanish were surprised to see Jennings again and asked if Great Britain and Spain were at war again. Jennings ignored them and proceeded to loot everyone and everything, including the personal possessions of the soldiers and salvagers. Estimations as to the value of the treasure Jennings took on his second raid varied greatly, but it is believed to be between 120,000 to 300,000 pieces of eight. No other raids on the salvage camp occurred. The Spanish finished up their salvage operations and left Florida in April of 1716. The treasure hunters who arrived afterwards only found small amounts of loot that had either been overlooked by the Spanish or that occasionally washed up on the beach. As for the Spanish fleet shipwrecks of the 11 ships that sank, seven are believed to have been found between Fort Pierce 
and Sebastian Inlet. And another is believed to have been found near Amelia Island. <clears throat> but positive identification remains elusive. There is still debate among experts as to which wrecks have been discovered, and no one can say for certain where the others lie. A large amount of the treasure may still remain along the shores of the southeast of southeast Florida. In 2015, a single cache of gold coins from the shores uh, from the 1715 fleet was recovered that valued $4,500,000. Modern treasure hunters are continually finding gold and silver coins just offshore or even along the beach. Additionally, fabulous pieces of jewelry occasionally turn up. Treasure hunters are especially productive after storms where the wind and rough surf wash treasure ashore. This is why the region near Fort Pierce is called the Treasure Coast. I have never been hunting down that far before on the Treasure Coast area, but I would love to. <laughs> but anyway, hope you enjoyed, and the next chapter will go into uh, Nassau and Florida during the era of the pirates. All right.